Hey guys, it's JJ. Welcome back to the UNC Dynasty. It's the first three games today. We're gonna start out against Minnesota and then have a couple easier games. I'm really excited to get this rebuild started. Uh, first of all, we're gonna take a look at recruiting for a little bit. Uh, we have uh, been locked out by Ty Lindsay. He got into his top eight immediately and uh, I was not in the top eight. David Sanders also locked us out. A tackle that looked pretty solid. And then a defensive tackle and a five-star linebacker also locked us out. And we just got locked out by the five-star linebacker, like just barely. Um, but have to um, leave them off the recruiting board then. We're gonna start the season off against the Minnesota Golden Gophers. I did not change anything about the schedule. And uh, I did not know that the Golden Gophers actually have a pretty decent team. This looks pretty good. Uh, they are also an 84 overall team, just like UNC. So I expect this to be a close game, but we should be able to win it at least. Uh, their quarterback is Max Brosmer, who has um, solid short and medium accuracy. He has a solid arm and can't really run that much. So just your average pocket passer. Uh, Darius Taylor is their running back. He is uh, very elusive, knows how to use a spin and a juke move, can catch the football and also knows how to truck and stiff arm people. So all in all, a really good running back. One of their best players on the team. Best player, by the way, is the left tackle. So don't expect to, too much edge rushers um, getting in the pocket today. Um, we have a top receiver here in Daniel Jackson. He's a really good route runner. His hands are solid and uh, he's a, an average athlete, I guess. And then their top edge rusher is Ja Joyner, who has 95 power moves against one of our 76 overall tackles. That is going to be a horrible matchup for UNC. Um, he also has 85 finesse moves, so that guy knows how to how to rush the passer. They also have a really good cornerback here in Justin Wally. And uh, he's a really good man cover corner, but he also has some zone ability uh, and average speed, which is enough against our receiving core. Now, um, we are going to start uh, with Johnson, the pocket passer, and uh, we'll see how his accuracies are doing. I am a little bit concerned because we don't really have the strongest O-line. We have a couple of good guards, but uh, the tackles in the center are really not playable in the ACC, I think. So I feel like uh, we could make a change at quarterback if the pressure is too much if we have to run a lot uh, for our lives and then Johnson is too slow to do that. He has like 76 uh, uh, speed and like 81 acceleration, which is not enough. As Minnesota goes out here with a three and out and they punt it away, Johnson hands it off to Omarion Hampton, our star running back, and he gets 12 on the carry. Now in plus territory and almost in field goal range here as uh, Barlow gets taken down for a four yard loss. Absolutely nowhere to go for him. So that turns into a third and 14 and we are going to get the screen off and Hampton is going to break a tackle, fall ahead, get 13, fourth and one. And we are going to try to fake him off. Did not work and the quarterback sneak did not work either. Oh my God, really? That looked for sure like he got it. And uh, UNC is throwing the quarterback, uh, the, the the challenge flag, the quarterback flag, yeah, sure. Uh, did not work out. Minnesota's got the back, uh, got the ball back. And that is an easy pitch and catch for Jackson, 11 yards. They're converting. Third and five now. And Brosmer has a man on the outside. It's Jackson. And that's another 20 yards here for Daniel Jackson. 
third and seven motion for the z receiver and he is the target but that is not gonna get, get him enough so fourth down and they are gonna kick it 55 yard try from left hash and this one is good they have got a really good kicker three nothing minnesota and uh johnson hands the ball off to omarion hampton and that is a phrase we're gonna say a lot uh that's 18 yards for hampton third and five now for johnson and he is gonna have a man wide open over the middle and that is mccollum and he's got a huge first down and um they are into field goal range already trips to the right johnson hands off to hampton and that is uh, that's actually barlow not hampton uh but it's still a massive first down now hampton's in the backfield again and uh, Johnson has his man over the middle, and that is Bryson Nesbitt. The top receiving threat is a tight end on this offense. And Nesbitt gets the first down, uh, gets the touchdown here. And uh, he is going to get the ball a lot, I'm assuming. Because the receiving core is actually not great here in Carolina. As Brosmer has a throw to the outside, 11 yards, first down. To Williams third and ten for Brosmer now and he has some time he does throw it away at the end there fourth down and that results in a punt now uh, actually they are going to try a 65 yarder really and I think he would have had the leg uh, but it is far left so now Johnson takes over on offense and this is Nesbitt gets the first down 12 yards moving the chains close to field goal range now johnson motions out hampton and hampton does get the ball on the rpo and he does turn it up field falling ahead getting the first down 13 yards johnson on first down hands it off to hampton who turns the corner on the outside and that's eight yards on the run on the outside zone give here second and four hampton is the back and he does get the football and he does run it into the end zone unc touchdown and hampton has another score uh that is also a phrase i'm gonna say a lot um it's his first on the season but we do have another score here for the tar heels 14 to 3 and uh, now Minnesota's back on offense, trips to the left, and Brosmer is chased outside, and he does not get the ball away. That's a sack. Three men get to him. And uh, that's going to be a fourth and 25, and a punt back to UNC, who start with good field position. Third and five, Blitz is picked up, and that's incomplete. Linebacker knocks it down. Punt back to Minnesota, and Brosmer is intercepted! UNC takes over at the 29. It's Power Eccles, the middle linebacker. What a beautiful play. He is just lurking there over the middle, and Brosmer didn't see him at all. And, uh, yeah, just uh, tried to get it to his receiver there over the middle on, like, a th I think it's a slant or something. Eccles just, he stands there, he needs to make one step, and he can't take it away. Eccles is definitely going to go to the NFL at the end of this season. And uh, on third and seven, we can't convert, so that is going to result in a punt. Uh, actually, in a, in a missed field goal, um, but we do uh, give it back to Minnesota now. Third and seven for Max Brosmer. He has lots of time and over the middle that is wide open for Williams. First and ten. And a clean pocket all day to throw and that's a wide open man on the outside this time as well. And that's got to be, uh, no that's actually Darius Taylor. The running back and uh, he lines up in the backfield but it's a pass and Brosmer is getting sacked. And that is a 14-yard loss, resulting in fourth and goal from the 17. And UNC takes a timeout uh, to try to have a possession of their own. There is still 40 seconds on the clock as Minnesota takes a field goal and makes this a one-score game. And there is Nesbitt uh, converting here into a new first down. 
Second and 21 for Johnson, the lefty, and he has tight end. He has a tight end wide open. Running down the sideline is Nesbitt, and he has a first down at the five yard line. But UNC doesn't have any timeouts anymore. So can you get there? They are going to go hurry up. Time is ticking down. And they are going to run a play. And that's a touchdown, UNC. 21-6. to That is Bryson Nesbitt again. Who is going to the NFL at the end of this season as well. And uh, that was a beautiful play. He ran a like a corner post route and uh, just the head fake was enough to get the linebacker confused about the direction the pass was going and then he was wide open at the back at the back of the end zone as the UNC Tar Heels take a 21 to 6 lead into halftime 7.2 yards per play 250 yards off offense this looks pretty promising now uh, Johnson has the ball Second and inches to start the third quarter, and he does throw one up, one-on-one, -on -one, and it's caught by J.J. Jones. He does get the first down there, and that's uh, 39 yards for Jones, as Johnson has an RPO. On the outside is Hampton, wide open, and he's got the touchdown, but there is a flag down. Oh, and this one hurts. This one hurts so badly, because... As the RPI, uh, RPO was gone, like, why would you go, go get a holding there? And then on third and 16, Omari and Hampton gets a, a, a slip screen and loses four. So that's a field goal for UNC instead of a touchdown. Rosmer over the middle to his running back Jackson, and that's a first down, 12 yards. Third and seven for Brosmer. And he has the clean pocket once again and is almost intercepted. Oh my. You gotta take that one away, jeez, dude. You have got to get the interception there. It's right in your hands. And then a weird punt. And the ball falls on UNC and Minnesota recovers. Oh my god, it's a muffed punt. And Minnesota is taking over here. Jackson, wide open running lane, 16 yards on that run. That is way too easy. Second and six. RPO and that's easily caught 10 yards on the outside moving the chains first and goal and they are gonna go with the Wildcat and they are gonna dump it forward and that is a touchdown on the on the touch pass Minnesota closes in on the lead it is still a two score game because the UNC took the field goal uh, earlier but now it's just an 11 point game instead of a 14 or 15 point game like we would have heard, had earlier as Nesbitt has a catch but it's uh, shy of the sticks and the three and out results in a punt back to Brosmer and uh, he is getting sacked here flag is down but that's a holding and uh, as it is third down now with the sack anyway we are going to decline that third and 13 and they have to punt it back because they do they don't get the conversion as uh, Johnson fumbled the ball on the um, on the on the blindside pressure, third and twelve for Johnson and Blitz is picked up wide open over the middle. That's Bryson Nesbitt and he's got another catch, 22 yards. Johnson over the middle and that is almost intercepted. What is happening here? And that is another holding on the UNC O-line. So now it's third and 17 for Johnson. And he does get it away over the middle. That's Bryson Nesbitt. Again, he gets 16, fourth down and one. And they are going to go for it. And that is a first down. This time the quarterback sneak works for Max Johnson. Third and five. Johnson has a clean pocket. He does get it away, but nobody was open. And uh, Hampton can't catch the football there. That's another field goal. It's now a 14-point game. And uh, Brosmer gets it away, gets the new first down to his receiver gears. First and 10 for Brosmer. Gets it away, and that's an easy pitch and catch first down. Now, third and four for Brosmer. Got to get this one, and this one is incomplete. Broken up over the middle, 
And they are going for it on fourth down. Brosmer gets it away, and that's a drop. That's just flat out a drop. Ball is back for Max Johnson, and he's going to hand it off to Omari and Hampton on the outside. There is a lot of running room. 16 yards on the carry. They are force feeding him the ball. He's almost at a 150, and now he's not got it because there is a flag down, and this one is also coming back. That's a holding on the UNC O line. Uh, right guard, uh, right tackle, Trayvon Green. Handoff. No, that's a play action shot. And there is another flag as Nesbitt had the first down. Are you kidding me, dude? And there is another flag. It's another holding call. And it's again Trayvon Green. Second and 27. Another play action shot for Johnson. That one's broken up. And there is another flag. Another holding and again, it's one of the tackles. This time it's left tackle, Howard Sampson. Are you kidding me? It's second and 37, just from penalties. As Nesbitt gets a huge chunk back. That's 22 yards. Ah oh, man, but it's still third and 15. How are you going to convert this? And they are going to go with an RPO bubble. And uh, that was knocked down by Ethan Robinson. So that's a turnover. Uh, well, not a turnover, but a punt back as we have another huge completion 21 yards to Jackson Second and five as we only have a minute on the clock and they need to score here right now And that's another conversion this time. It's Williams second and ten and Brosmer has a clean pocket he does get it away and that is caught for the first down here third and ten now for Brosmer, 38 seconds on the clock, and that is broken up. UNC defenders right there at the at the edge of the field. Fourth down and 10. You gotta have a touchdown here, or the game is over. And that is almost intercepted. And he, if he had intercepted that, that would have been a pick six, definitely. Oh my God, they lucked out there at the end, but uh, still a 27 to 13 win. Didn't really get a whole lot of offense going in the second half. The player of the game is Bryson Nesbitt. Eight catches, 142, two touchdowns. We also got Omari and Hampton, a buck 50 and uh, one touchdown. Great day for UNC as we do have um, Max Johnson with 21 of 33. I think that's a good day on offense. Uh, I can live with that. Um, the pressure was... Pretty hefty today, but yeah. Um, Bryson Nesbitt, the one man, uh, the one man show today. JJ Jones had one big, one big catch and like two slants or something. We had uh, a couple of sacks uh, here from both our edge rushers and uh, Hester, the defensive tackle, and we get the one interception by Power Echoes, but we really should have had another one there at the end. As we sim a week forward, we are being locked out by Ruben Shipley. And we're going to remove him. And also edge rusher George Chukwura. He also locked us out. He's from Florida. Um, but for some reason, Michigan leads this battle. And then we're going to jump into the next game. It's against the Charlotte 49ers. And they have a few really good players, but the rest of the roster is... Yeah... 70s overall this is uh, not the greatest team we'll ever see but uh, max brown is a really solid quarterback in 92 throw power he has some um, really good uh, running back skills as well this kid can run but his accuracies are not the greatest so there is a chance for us to like maybe get a couple picks or something we'll see uh, Teron kelman is their running back and he knows how to run for sure. Uh, he also is not a great uh, uh, pass catcher out of the backfield. But his speed and acceleration should uh, make us scared a little bit. And then their top player is a tight end. Colin Weber. Who has great hands. Knows how to run a route. Um, and he also has some pretty good speed. Well, I mean actually 78 speed is not great. Um, but it's good enough to survive against our linebacking core their top edge rusher is demon Clowney awesome name 
Good pass rusher, not I wouldn't say awesome, but 81 finesse moves and 81 power moves is really good. He knows how to stop the run as well, a little bit at least, and uh, he's a really, really good athlete. Prince Bima is the middle linebacker, and um, yeah, he's a solid middle linebacker. I think he's a little bit worse than what we have here in Power Echoes, but... He knows how to stop the run, and that's the one thing that counts for him. The coverage ability is not the greatest. And then, I don't know how they got this guy, but Dante Balfour looks awesome. A four-star corner, almost uncapped here. Uh, 86, uh, 86 man coverage, 83 press. He also has 84 zone coverage. Like, this kid knows how to cover. And uh, he also has 90 speed, which is more than enough against our receivers. And, um, yeah, this, uh, this corner, I don't know how they got him, but, uh, Balfour looks awesome, and, uh, we better not throw his way, as, uh, UNC takes their, um, takes the field at home for the first time this year, really excited about, uh, playing here at the Kingdom Memorial Stadium, and, uh, we're gonna keep Max Johnson as the starting quarterback. I think, uh, game one was good enough. Uh, he didn't throw any picks. Uh, he didn't throw any, like, horrible overthrows or something. And, uh, I feel like our other quarterbacks don't really have the accuracy to compete. As we have an easy pitch and catch first down, 17 yards to the second tight end. That's Bryce Kennan. Um, not Colin Weber. Third and five for Brown. He moves out of the pocket and does throw it away in the end. So that's a fourth down and a punt. Back um, to the uh, for the opening possession. It's Amari and Hampton. And he is running people over 12 yards. Absolutely. Um, yeah, running over one of the one of the DBs here. And Omari and Hampton has a block on the outside and he's fighting ahead, and that is. 34 yards on the outside zone give. Third and seven for Johnson. And he is almost sacked and he overthrows McCollum. And that was an easy touchdown there. And that's a field goal for North Carolina. A 3-0 game now. And uh, that is a flag down. Uh, I hope not for the hit because that was a good one. But there is a holding call on the O-line. Third and 11 coming up now. And Brown has lots of time. And he is almost getting sacked, but then slides anyway. Fourth down. Should have tried to make the last man miss there. Second and five. Motion for McCollum. And they are going to throw it. And getting sacked is Johnson. Demon Clowney in the backfield already. Johnson gets it away over the middle. And oh my god, you did not just drop that, did you? Nate McCollum drops a ball wide open over the middle and that would have moved the chains but now it's a three and out uh, not a three and out but an out and they have to punt it back and then Charlotte uh, does also not get it so they have to punt it back to UNC good field position and Nesbitt does have the first down there second and two for Johnson gets it away touchdown Tar Heels it is a 10-0 game for the North Carolina Tar Heels as Nesbitt has yet another touchdown. This kid is going to get so many receptions this year, I think. This kid looks unbelievable. Second and four for Charlotte. And uh, that was easy for Kelman, who gets about uh, 14 yards on that run. Now from the 40, we have... Max Brown repositioning, throwing away on third down, makes it fourth down, and that is a punt to the Tar Heels as Johnson takes the field again. He is going to dump it off on third and seven, but he does not get it, But uh, so they have to punt it back. First and ten for Kelman, and that is way too easy. And that's a 19-yard gain on third down. Now third and two. And Kalman has another opening here. No, he does not. He is getting stopped fourth down and inches. And that's a field goal for the 49ers. As the Tar Heels now take over on offense. And we have Nesbitt not holding on to the football. That's another three and out. Great field position for the Charlotte offense. And Brown is getting sacked. 
finally. It took a while, but they got him down and the timeout is taken. There is 70 se seconds on the clock for Johnson and he is just gonna take off and get what he can. That's 13 yards. Uh, didn't know he can run, but he did there. Johnson is uh, throwing it over the middle and that is Nesbitt. 15 yard connection, unbelievable throw as he was getting hit there, still delivering. Johnson gets it away, that's Nesbitt again, 14 yards on that one. And they move the chains again, and now at the edge of field goal range, there's 20 seconds on the clock. Johnson gets it away, and that's JJ Jones, and that's 25 yards, timeout taken by the Tar Heels. And they have about 10 seconds on the clock, I think, uh, to get this ball in the end zone. Second and goal from the six, 10 seconds on the clock. Johnson over the middle, and that's Jones. Touchdown, Tar Heels. And that's a two score lead as JJ Jones makes the tough grab over the middle there. North Carolina leading by 14 points now, and that is the end of the halftime. Uh, the end of the half, so we're now at halftime. And of course, if you enjoy this video, I would appreciate it if you gave it a thumbs up, subscribe, ring the bell for notifications. Bryson Nesbitt so far has um, 52 yards, which is not even close to what I expected. I expected him to be at like 100 already, um, just from the volume he's getting. Johnson gets his running back involved in the passing game. Omarion Hampton, 21 yards on the Texas route. And that's a third and five now for Johnson coming up and he does get it away but incomplete for McCollum again that kid can't, can't catch a ball and uh, not a break either now uh, great field position as uh, Charlotte takes over but there is a flag down on that one and that's coming back the O-line getting called for a holding here and now it's third and 20 after an incomplete pass and Johnson is just going to dump it off to the sideline here and that's even dropped. That is going to result in a punt and Johnson takes over on offense, hands it off to Omari and Hampton who is running over people and he had a 17 yarder. But uh, for some reason North Carolina can't stop the holding penalties. This one's against right guard Zach Rice. Um, so Charlotte takes over on offense after they can't get the first down here. And uh, Kalman has an easy first down. Jumps over one person. That's a 12-yard gain. First and 10 now for Brown. And he's going to hand it off to his running back, Kalman, who's going to get the first down on the outside. That's 11 yards. And they are going to move the chains into the green zone. Max Brown to the end zone. Touchdown, Charlotte. And they are getting it done here in Chapel Hill, North Carolina. As uh, Weber has his first touchdown on the day. And now it's a seven point game. And Omarion Hampton is getting fed again. And that's 15 yards on the, on the give. Now they are going to pass it again here. Johnson has a clean pocket for now. And uh, it's knocked away from Nesbitt who should have gotten up and get it there. Uh, so that's a punt back to Charlotte and Charlotte gets the first down on this one. That's about 12 yards to Dwayne Thomas. Third and eight for Max Brown and that's intercepted. That's Huzzy and he's going to take it back as well as a Weber does not catch him. But the quarterback does. Brown knocks him out of bounds there. But that's a very short field for the Tar Heels now. And you got to convert here. You got to take this into the end zone, man. This has to be a two score lead now. This is kind of embarrassing. We're in the fourth quarter and you're only leading by one score. Third and four. Johnson has a slants concept and he does reset a couple times and it's a touchdown. JJ Jones on the 22 yarder. And that one should do it. You can't let get uh, you can't get them uh, can't let them get back in the game. Can't talk anymore apparently. UNC leading 24 to 10 now, going into the few final minutes of the game as JJ Jones is uh, making the tough grab again with uh, blanket coverage, and Kelman has a wide open, wide open running lane. That's 20 yards. You're kidding. Third and one. 
from midfield and they are gonna hand it off to Kalman and he's got another huge rush that's 16 yards on the give oh man you can't let them score you can't let him score that's Kalman again and he's another huge rush that's 22 yards we just allowed three big rushing um, threats here and now Brown is going to throw it outside fourth and goal coming up and they gotta go for it from the three that's Brown just stepping up and uh, there is no holding call there or something uh, just tripping up the defensive tackle yeah sure whatever ref that's uh, that's just fine 17 to 24 and now you've got to run out this clock and uh, who better to run it out with than oh Marion Hampton 10 yards for him on this one third and 12 coming up now though they are rushing the quarterback and behind the defense is JJ Jones touchdown Tar Heels and that one should do it that one was a little bit too easy as uh, the 49ers brought the pressure on all three downs of this set of downs and on the first two they did uh, they did get two TFLs but uh, on third and 12 um, Johnson was like yeah um, let's do that again and we're just gonna have a pass and uh, a fly down the field that was a little bit too exciting um, for this game this should have been a clear decisive win from the get-go but it really wasn't we kept shooting ourselves in the foot as by the way JJ Jones has three touchdowns and gets player of the game 118 yards on this day for him and uh, yeah that's uh, that's just beautiful can't believe that JJ Jones got behind the defense with his 86 speed which is definitely not enough to play in the NFL but uh, we'll wish him the best anyway I'm guessing now um, let's uh, go over the stats for a second here but um, yeah this was an okay game the the pressure was kind of rel relentless from the D-line. I, I, our O-line was not ready for it. But uh, Omari and Hampton gets 125 yards. No touchdowns today. As all of them went to our receivers. It's JJ Jones with three touchdowns on uh, 118 yards. Nesbitt got 77 in the score. And uh, for the defense, uh, man, this middle linebacker is unbelievable. Power Eccles is flying all around the field. The, the, the worst part of this game, by the way, is definitely the pass rush. We only had one sack on like a 76 overall offensive, offensive line. They didn't have a single offensive line starter over like 100, um, uh, over 80 overall. Like everybody was like 75, 77 or something. And we could get only one sack, really? Man, that was ridiculous. But let's jump to the next game. I did not change the schedule at all. So we are now going to play FCS Southeast. Also at home at the Keenan Memorial Stadium. But this should be an easy win. I don't have a roster overview for you guys. Obviously, because uh, it's an FCS team. But we're going to start the day on offense by running the football down their throats. And that's an 11-yard gain to Omarion Hampton now we have a tight end blocking but that's an rpo and on the outside that's mccullum and he's got the first down and he finally catches the football that's 21 yards Mo uh, moving the football into the red zone now uh after a holding call we have uh nate uh not nate gavin blackwell is that one that's a nice catch and run for gavin blackwell up the middle and that's an easy 20 yard connection first and 10 now for Johnson and that is Nesbitt 20 yards to him and we are inside the five now and who better to give the football to than oh Marion Hampton into the end zone and that's a touchdown Tar Heels starting the day right on offense seven nothing for North Carolina and uh, that was a little bit too easy Let's see what this defense can do against an FCS opponent. They have uh, two running backs in the backfield and that one is a sack and a fumble. But the FCS Pandas fall on it. Uh, that's disappointing. Third and 18 uh, is coming up though. And they do not 
Well, I mean, they do try, but uh, I can assure you they definitely won't get that one. Well, they will! Are you kidding me? It's 3rd and 18! This is an FCS team! Are you kidding me? How can you allow that? 3rd and 7 now for the Pandas, and they are going to throw it one-on-one -on -one down the field, but that's incomplete. Knocked away by the defense, and finally they get the punt. But they should have gotten it way earlier, and there is a flag down. And that's uh, Zach Rice again, the left guard. The right guard who plays left guard uh, for our team. First and 20, and that is going to be a run for Omarion Hampton. 14 yards, converting into a second and six that is a lot more doable. And they are going to hand it off, and Hampton is going to run over people, and that's 8 yards, getting the first down. He got all the 20 yards back in, in, in two plays, just running over people. And uh, Hampton has another run, getting a block on the outside, shoving away one defender, getting dragged down from behind here. And that's another first down. Third and six now coming up for Johnson, though. And he does get it away, and that's wide open for Nesbitt. And he's got another huge conversion, Th uh, 36 yards on that one. UNC now inside the five, and they are going Wildcat, flipping it forward to running back Caleb Hood. Touchdown, Tar Heels. And North Carolina is running away with the game already. 14-0 in the first half. And... Um, yeah, let's see, let's see if the Pandas can do anything about it. Uh, they do uh, get a couple first downs, uh, so they are starting now from midfield as the quarterback, for some reason, has some unbelievable wheels. And he gets about 12 yards in that one. Third and 10 at the edge of field goal range. And uh, not getting sacked as the quarterback here. Fourth down and six. He uh, does not get the first down, though. And that's a field goal try. 49 yarder and for some reason this FES, FCS team has a be better kicker than the Tar Heels 3 to 14 now Johnson is getting pressured. He did not uh, see the middle linebacker crashing down on him um, But it wouldn't have mattered because nobody was open at all on the entire field everything was covered up so that's a punt and then the pandas don't get the first down so they punt it right back and ha and Hampton is gonna get the ball here running over two people and that is a first down man it's so fun to play with Amari and Hampton as uh, he is getting another give it's a sweep to the outside he turns it upfield he gets the first down he shoves away one defender and there is another holding call on the right guard Trayvon Green are you kidding me that kid can't catch a break as uh, we have now Barlow on the outside that's 20 yards gets the first down as well and Johnson is going to have a pass on 3rd and 13, a one on one and JJ Jones can't haul it in against an FCS team. So that's a field goal, it's a 14 point game and nowhere to go on this one. Ritzy gets a TFL, he gets a second TFL on 2nd down and then he gets the sack on 3rd down. Now that possession was all Javari Ritzy. And that is a 3 and out, uh, right at the 2 minute warning as well. First and 10 for Max Johnson. And that is a beautiful catch on the outside by J.J. Jones. He lays out to get that one in on the corner route. And Johnson is pressured. And the slip screen is working out. And that is a first down. And the flag is down. Are you kidding me? Another holding call. What is this offense doing? This time it's the center. First and 18 for Johnson. And he does get it away. And McCollum gets the first down. They get it all back in one play. 21 yards to McCollum. Third and 10 now, though. They didn't get the first down. That's a five-man pressure. One-on-one. -on -one. Back of the end zone. Jones does not haul it in. And that is a field goal for North Carolina. So now it's a 20-3 uh, to three game at halftime. And... Yeah, you know how this game is going. I'm not going to bore you with the rest of this game. Uh, we did get three touchdowns with Amari and Hampton, so he gets player of the game. But we're not going to go over the, over the second half of the game. It's just not worth it. Uh, this is a boring game. And uh, I should have changed the schedule, maybe. 
but yeah, uh, only touchdown pass on the game it goes to Barlow, the running back, um, as Hampton gets three touchdowns on the day, and then the fourth touchdown goes to running back Caleb Hood. I think that's his... It's definitely his first catch on the season. It might be one of his uh, first carries as well. As we had a nice, uh, nice game on defense, the offense was pretty awful, though. We should have uh, put 50 points on them, but... We kept uh, shooting ourselves in the foot, and um, yeah, we got a few sacks here and there, nothing special. We should have had uh, at least double the amount of sacks we did have. We did have four sacks and uh, only one pick. We should have had six picks or something. Uh, we had so many drop picks. As Ritzy gets uh, ACC Defensive Player of the Week. And uh, we have a recruiting update here as uh, cornerback Earl Ruffin has locked us out. I didn't put any points into him, so that is fine with me. Um, just had hope that maybe a couple of these players don't get recruited until I get my first commits. But we do have an update for the end of the episode. We are well in the lead for Kowalkowski. We are, however, kind of losing out on the running backs, which is really disappointing. We are leading uh, by a good margin with Buck Stoner, the five-star receiver. We're leading for two other receivers in Darren Pounds and Marquise Brooks. And a handsome lead as well. We are leading for right tackle uh, Barr, but we are, are kind of losing out on battle. And this is the last week where I'm going to put points into him. If we don't get the first place back, if South Carolina runs away with this, uh, I'm going to remove him. Uh, off the board and then uh, we are putting points into Joel Clinton that's working out we are leading for Dylan Jerry that's working out we're leading for Jesse Blunt that's also working out and then we're putting a lot of points into DBs Moses Riggins the five-star corner he we have a good lead on him Steven Slate um, also really good lead on him Emmanuel Ruse really good lead on him as well and then the five-star safety uh, beautiful lead there as well um, so we are looking pretty good on all these players that we're recruiting and I hope that a couple of these other players that are still on the board don't re get recruited until next week because I think we can get our first three or four recruits next week because we have four visits and in the next game which we're gonna play against James Madison and I think we could get at least uh, two maybe three recruits in that game um, and then I'm gonna put the points into some other players there now, uh, that's gonna yeah, be the end of the episode. Uh, Florida State, by the way, is already 2-0 in conference. Kind of unbelievable. Wake Forest is 1-0 uh, in conference. Uh, and then Georgia Tech is 1-1. Everybody else is 0-0. Uh, and then a couple of teams at the bottom who lost those games. But uh, yeah, that's gonna do it for this episode. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed, please leave a like and subscribe for more Tar Heels Dynasty. See you in the next episode. Until then, have a great day.